Hello and welcome to this month's Market Matters a Video Update. I'm Harry Watt, joined by James Gerrish. As we always do for the start of the month, James, we're going to run through some portfolio performance, but we're also going to talk about a few things going on in the market uh, and get some ideas and where we're positioned from here. But to start off with, we run a few portfolios through Market Matters. How did they perform to kick off 2024? We've got five portfolios, Harry. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle in January. Obviously, the market was pretty positive uh, at the start of the year. So the ASX 200 was up 1.2%. Uh, for the month. To give you an idea of the growth portfolio, it was up 0.26%, uh, a bit of underperformance there. On a 12-month um, a view, it's up 13.02%. Uh, the benchmark's up about 7%, so about 5% above the benchmark on a 12-month view. Active income did 0.57% for the month uh, in line with its benchmark, 10.5% uh, for three years, so all going well there. Emerging companies, 0.23% for the month, underperformed its benchmark. Uh, it's slightly lower for three years, but it's above its benchmark since inception. And international equities did 0.41%. Again, it was a, a sluggish performance versus benchmark. Uh, it is done 12.11% for the last three years. The one that I, I'd call out, and we don't generally talk about this one, but it's a little bit boring and it's only a new portfolio here at Market Matters, so we don't have the performance history of the others, is the core ETF portfolio. So it's a, uh, it's a blended balanced portfolio using ETFs. Uh, dynamically managed within an asset allocation framework. So um, we haven't changed it in the last six months though, so it's not that dynamic, I guess. Uh, in terms of that portfolio, that was up 1.82%, uh, and it's been going about six months. So um, it's done 436 in those six months and about 6% since inception. So the performance track record of that portfolio, which is a fairly passive uh, portfolio is uh, building and it's uh, progressing ahead of benchmark carry. So not a great way to start the year given the backdrop from a relative standpoint versus the market, uh, but all portfolios were positive nonetheless. So to start the year, James, we were pretty fully invested right at the beginning of um, January. We started to taper that off, increasing a bit of cash and moving more defensively. Is this a trend that we're going to stick with for a little while? You know, we are set, sort of seeing this market punch near a short-time highs. Um, you know, is this sort of an opportunity to shift to more defensively as we go through 2024? So uh, S&P um, 500 last night hit 5,000. The all-time high and a big milestone for that index. The ASX 200 traded above 7,700. Uh, again, a new all-time high uh, and the first time it's broached that 7,700 level. So clearly markets are, you know, they've been strong. We had a really strong calendar year 23 in markets. Uh, and they're as you, you know, they're they're, they're touching all time highs. When markets have had a really strong run, and we're going into a period of reporting, it makes sense just to put a bit more flexibility back in portfolios. And that's pretty much all we've done. So we've trimmed a bit off the top, taken some profits on some positions, uh, and we've added a couple of, I guess, more defensive holdings. So. Um, you know, a practical uh, example would be so Aurora moving out of some technology into a packaging company, a packaging stock that's had a difficult 12 months, um, but we think the next 12 months will be better. Um, you know, focusing on areas in our income portfolio like infrastructure, which has actually been pretty weak in the last 12 months. Obviously, it gets hurt from higher interest rates. If we think that interest rates will fall over the coming 12 months and infrastructures, you know, a really good defensive place to be. So uh, not a huge change in terms of positioning. We've written about turning more defensive, but it is just an incremental increase in cash, uh, increased flexibility leading into reporting. Uh, and then, you know, looking at some of the lower beta stocks that um, have perhaps been sold down over the past 12 months. One sort of position that we've got across a lot of our portfolios at the moment is commodities, which sort of moves against the defensive sort of nature of where we are shifting, but it is sort of an area of the market we continue to like. Um, yeah, are we sort of going to continue to run that sort of, you know, sort of bit of both ends of the portfolio moving forward? So, uh, you know, our view on commodities. So in terms of January, that was our overweighting commodities led to, I guess, the underperformance versus the market. So um, uh, that's fine. We've got this, um, you know, we've, we've continued to back that bet and we've added to it uh, since, uh, uh, since the end of January. So um, we like commodities here. We think there's a couple of key reasons to like commodities here. China is turning the ship around. So China growth has been woeful. Uh, in 2023. Their equity market performance has been woeful during that time period as well. The signs that the administration is getting them, you know, the all stops out to turn that, um, I guess, turn those trends around. So 
that's one. So China is turning, and uh, China turning is positive for commodities. The other one is around um, the US dollar in recent times. So we've had this changing uh, expectation or pricing of interest rates in the market. So uh, back end of 23, there was five to six uh, interest rate cuts priced into the US market, pretty aggressive. That's moved. The Fed's turned um, a little bit less um uh, you know, is, is put, poured some cold water on those interest rate expectations. So the markets moved to about a four to five percent, uh, four to five uh, cuts over in the US in 2024. That's put upward pressure on the US dollar. The US dollar rising is not good for commodities. So uh, we think that pricing is now um, largely in. So the US dollar index uh, sort of mid 104 range. Um, we think the more likelihood is the US dollar tracks lower over the course of the year, which is going to be bullish for commodities. And thirdly, just pricing of commodities, uh, the equities. Um, so BHP, for instance, is your proxy in the space, is down at the bottom end of its trading range around 46 bucks. Some of these things like Iluca, yeah, they're down from 12 down to um, 7 bucks over the course of the last 12 months. We think that is gone too far and there's value there. So, um, And then in other areas, it's been a little bit um, different. So uranium, we've spoken a lot on these calls about our positive view on the uranium. We've turned a little bit more neutral on the uranium space. Uh, we think probably, as we say on the desk a lot, everyone's on the one side of the canoe. Um, and you often get um, a tipping point um, where you know, the market changes and you get big moves. So we've, we're, we're out of uranium for the moment. Um, but we'll look to re-enter if it pulls back. So um, pretty much sums up our view on commodities, Harry. A bit of performance revision going on there. So let's talk more broadly. Um, half your results now underway. We're sort of you know, a week or so into February. This is reporting season, first half reporting season for the market. Any sort of signs you're picking up on this early on uh, in this reporting period, James? It's only been a few companies of note that have reported they really kick in the gear next week. When you go through tough times in business, you ultimately improve the structures within your business. You cut costs where you can. Um, you streamline operations. You're looking for all those incremental cost savings. Um, no doubt we've been through some pretty tough times in the last few years in terms of business. But if you get an economic upswing, then your business is in better shape. Um, and those margins start to uh, expand again. And I think that's what we're starting to see in things like retail. Um, we saw uh, AGLs for company we owned. Uh, yesterday come out with their results that were better. Um, I think overall, econo um, economic conditions are, have, have been a lot better than we thought they would be, uh, a lot better than many thought they would be at the start of last year, and companies are performing well. And it's the same over in the US. So the quarterly earnings season over in the US uh, has been really positive. We've got about 80% of companies have beaten. Um, and some of the trends there are really interesting. So uh, early days this reporting season, but so far, so good, Harry. All right. Well, you've touched on U.S. interest rates already. You've touched on how our reporting season is going locally interest rates. Mm -hmm. So we've had the RBA's first meeting of the year earlier this week. Michelle Bullock uh, up in front of the cameras as well after that one. Uh, what's your take on the RBA's view it and you know, sort of where interest rates are going and how that would impact the market for the next few months? Well, so Aussie uh, cash rates are 4.35%. Um, they held it firm. Uh, it stays stable uh, when they met one Tuesday. Interesting, the first time we've had a uh, press conference after the uh, two-day meeting now. So we're moving towards a US-style um, uh, central bank communications and the like. But I think Michelle Bullock did as good a job as Jerome Powell. But when you think back when he started um, in his role, he had a few, um, you know, he wasn't as um, comfortable in that role. So Michelle Bullock gets to get more comfortable in that role. So in terms of, you know, interest rate expectations, the market's pricing in two cuts this year, so um, taking that you know, benchmark rate below 4%, we think that's probably about right. You know, we're probably, um, your markets in Australia are pricing as many cuts. Um, so, you know, if they cut twice, you know, the, the US cut more, um, I think that's probably, um, is about right in terms of policy. A commentary was probably more um, porkish than dovish would be my take out but that still doesn't change i guess our expectations around rate cuts i think we'll get one to two rate cuts here this year uh, and that's again supportive of equity market so uh, you get a, a situation where growth is holding up economic conditions are firm uh, inflation is coming down uh, which it is 
uh, and then interest rates are getting cut. You could actually you know, describe a pretty bullish backdrop for equities. I don't think we're there yet, but I think there's we've got to be conscious of not getting too bearish just because markets are at uh, all-time highs. Well, CBA today calling for three cuts. You see, seven five two so the RBA finally opening to end the question for you, James. Um, some, you know, your markets are at all-time highs. We're not getting too bearish, even though we are sort of a little bit more defensively positioned at the moment. Yeah, what are some areas of the market we haven't pulled out so far today that you would find interesting? We're, we're increasing flexibility. So, um, yeah, a lot of people, when you talk about turning a little bit defensive or putting cash in portfolios or whatever, think you, you know, you're bearish on the market. You're not. You're still um, you know, 85 90% exposed to the market. You want it to continue to do well, uh, but you're just giving a little bit of flexibility in your portfolio, which I think is important. In terms of sectors I haven't called out today, obviously one I have is commodities. We like commodities here, we're overweight that space. Property is the other one I'd call out. Um, uh, in simple terms, lower rates is going to be positive on property. I think the market, much like retail, the market's probably got too bearish on their assumptions around property valuations. Um, so there's a lot of property trusts out there trading at steep discounts to asset value. Asset values will come down, but they won't come down as much as the market's pricing. Um, some of these property real estate investment trusts have got more leverage to a falling interest rate environment as well. So um, that is going to be uh, important to drive their earnings. Uh, so I think that sector's probably the one I'd call out. Um, National Storage, NSR is one we own there. Uh, Centuria Capital, one we've spoken about a few times on this. It's, it hasn't had the, the best last 12 months or so uh, but it's very much leveraged the lower interest rate c and i uh, so there's a bunch out there that look really appealing and they don't importantly that their, their balance sheets are in good you know they're not overly geared um for their their um you know stick to the you know, reasonably high quality end of the spectrum and they do okay in real estate i'll imagine Larry. all right stay nimble staying well commodities and real estate uh but that's all we got time for today i hope you got something out of that video we're going to stay nimble and get back to the desk uh, for a big afternoon's train Thank you.